Hello everyone, today we're going to talk about selection chart. So we will first talk about how selection chart works, then we will implement it, and finally we will talk about the runtime and space complexity of selection chart. So let's first talk about how selection chart works. So in selection chart, we basically select an element and mark it as minimum. Then we compare that minimum element with the rest of the elements in the array. And if we find that there is some other element in the array which is smaller than the minimum element that we initially selected, then we change our minimum to that element and we also keep track of the location of that element. And after all the comparisons, we swap that minimum element with the element that we initially selected as minimum. So if that sounds confusing, let's see an example. So here we have an array of eight elements and we're gonna sort it in ascending order using selection shot. So in the first iteration, we will mark 10 as our minimum element. Then we will compare 10 with eight. So eight is less than 10, so our minimum will become eight. Now we will compare eight with 99. 8 is less than 99, so our minimum will still remain 8. Now we will compare 8 with 7. Now 7 is less than 8, so our minimum will become 7. Now we will compare 7 with 1. Now 1 is less than 7, so our minimum will become 1. Then we will compare 1 with 5. 1 is less than 5, so our minimum will still be 1. Now we will compare 1 with 88. Then we will compare 1 with 9. So our minimum will be 1 and now we will swap 1 with 10 which was the initial minimum that we selected. So after that swap, uh, the resulting array will be this one and 1 which was the minimum element in the array will be at its right position. So in the second iteration, we will select 8 as our minimum element and again we're gonna compare it with the rest of the elements. So we will compare 8 with 99 since 8 is less than 99, so our minimum will still be 8. Then we will compare 8 with 7, so our minimum will become 7. Then we will compare 7 with 10, our minimum will still be 7. Then we will compare 7 with 5, so our minimum will become 5. Then we will compare 5 with 88, then we will compare 5 with 9. So our minimum is 5, so we're going to swap 8 and 5. So 5 will come at the second position. Now after third iteration, in the third iteration we will select 99 as our minimum element then we're gonna compare 99 with 7. So 7 is less than 99 so 7 will become our minimum and then we will compare 7 with 10. 7 is less than 10 so our minimum will still remain 7. So we, now we will compare 7 with 8. So 7 still remains the minimum, then we will compare 7 with 88, 7 still remains the minimum, then we will compare 7 with 99 and 9, and 7 still remains the minimum, so we will swap 99 and 7. So 7, which is the third lowest element in the array, will be at its right position after third iteration. So in this way, after each iteration, one element will get position at its right position uh, at its right index basically in the array and after n minus 1 iteration we will have the sorted array so if the element is the number of elements is 8 so after 7 iteration we will have our sorted array so this is how selection shot works now let's see how to implement that so here we have implemented selection shot so uh, there are two loops so this outer loops basically runs n minus one times so if you have uh, an array which contains 10 elements it will loop through nine times and in each loop it will basically compare that minimum element with the rest of the elements and if it finds uh, that array j is less than minimum then it will make array j as the next minimum and it will keep comparing that and after all the comparisons, we will swap uh, the array i, uh, which was the initial minimum, with that the with the minimum that we found from this inner loop, basically. So this is how we can implement the selection chart. 
So there are two important things that the first one is that it runs n minus one times and we will start j with i plus one. So if you see in this example, uh, we take 10 as our minimum uh, in the first iteration and then we start with eight. So j starts with the next element. So we start comparing with the next element. That's why uh, j is i plus one and we compare it till our last element, so j less than n. So if I run this uh, code, it should work. So it gives uh, us the sorted uh, results, so 1, 5, 7, 8, 9, 10, 88, and 99. So this is how we can sort in ascending order, but if you want to sort in descending order, we just have to change uh, the logic. So now we, in this case, uh, we are sorting in reverse order. Uh, we will mark array i as maximum and we will loop through to make the comparisons. So if we find that array j is greater than maximum, we will mark array j as the maximum. And after all the comparisons, we will swap the initial maximum with the maximum that we found after this uh, loop executed. So we basically change the condition here, array j greater than maximum, then that maximum will become array j. So if I run this code, it should sort in reverse order. So we get our array sorted in reverse order. So just by changing this condition here, we can sort in reverse order. So this is about implementing selection shot. Now let's talk about complexity of selection shot. So in selection shot, the number of comparisons is still the order of n square, similar to bubble shot. So in bubble shot, uh, we compare order of n square and similar to that in selection shot, also we have the number of comparisons is order of n square. But there is one advantage that selection shot have is that number of swaps done to sort an ar array of element n, uh, there will be only n swaps because in each iteration, we only make one swap. So if you see in this example, after first iteration, we only make one swap to swap 10 and 1. So in the second iteration, we make one swap to swap eight and five. In third iteration, we make one swap to swap seven and 99. So in each iteration, we make one swap. So the number of swap will be N. So this is one advantage of selection sort over bubble shot, where we have a large number of swaps basically. So that's one thing and if we talk about average case complexity and worst case complexity and the best case complexity, it will be of the order of n square, uh, order of n square basically because it doesn't depend uh, on the how the your input is uh, sorted basically. So regardless of your input, it will always run uh, n minus one iteration and in each iteration, it will make a swap. So suppose your input array is this. So in first iteration, if it, it will make nine comparisons. In the second iteration, it will make eight comparisons. In the third iteration, it will make seven comparisons. So if you sum all the uh, comparisons, it will be of the order of n square. So all worst case complexity, average case complexity, and best case complexity will be of big O of n square in case of selection sort. So it doesn't matter on the input array. So it will always be running on n minus one iterations and it will always make one swap in each iteration. So the number of comparisons will always be of order of n square. Uh, so that's why all the complexity of uh, selection shot is order of n square. So big O of n square. Now talking about space complexity, since in this implementation, we are only using a uh, couple of uh, variables to keep track of our minimum and uh, element. 
and to swap that element so temp variable so we are only keeping a couple of extra variables to help us keep track of the minimum element and later swap that element so it doesn't matter whether we are sorting 10 elements or 100 elements or 1000 elements or 1 million elements the space used by this selection shot implementation will always be constant and we are not using any other data structure here in the implementation of selection shot so it, the space used by this algorithm will always be constant that's why uh, the space complexity of selection shot this implementation of selection shot is because of one so this is all about selection shot if you want to get the code you can get the code for this implementation here and also if you want to check the complexity of uh, other sorting algorithms we can check it on the bigo cheat sheet so here you can see that selection shot is of order of n square in all the cases as we talked previously so best case and average case and worst case all are big o of n square and the space complexity is big o of one so in the next video we will talk about insertion sort